The problem is, is that you need to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. Oftentimes, people make the mistake of choosing one to two shades apart. Watch this portion of the video on how to choose the correct paint colors. When you're doing the color meshing technique with the Wooly, to have the greatest level of success, you'll want to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. This is done by taking a look at a fan deck and choosing a color that you think you want your end result to be in the room as far as lightness and darkness. In this particular situation, I'm going to choose this color right here. From there, I'm going to go up two shades, one, two, and this will be the first color that I'm going to use. In order to choose my second color, I'll go back to my original color and drop down two shades. This will be my second color that I'll use. Ultimately, my end result will be somewhere in this tone. Now being that with color meshing, you can use between two and six colors in one coat. If you choose to add more accent colors, you'll want them to be on the same level as your darkest color. So you can choose more colors to make it all work. The following video clip will show you how to touch up a particular area on your wall using the color meshing technique. This can be done when the surface is dry. But remember, your paints will dry darker. So when doing a touch up area, blend it, wait for it to dry to see your end results before you continue. Okay, so now I stood back and I took a look at the wall. And I think, really for the most part, it looks really good, as will, I'm sure, it will when you do your walls. But every once in a while, there's an area where you look at it and go, hmm, I'd like to make a change to the wall. Now right through here, I think it just needs a little bit of change. Now how that's done is a common mistake is people think that, that you should just take one color and add it once it's already begun drying. And that's not the situation. With this, you actually want to all, use all of the colors. So with that, I'm actually going to do that. Take my paintbrush and add all three paint colors. There's some harsh spots through here, so I'm going to go ahead and add these. Take my brush and spread the paint out. Then I'm going to take the woolly and blend it in. And what you want to do is make a soft transition of stippling it so it goes in and out. So that you make a nice transition over the area that you were painting or that you had done previously to the area that you're doing now. There, now I'm happy. So, quick and easy fixes to do the color meshing process. Cleanup is a snap. Simply turn on the warm water, take the woolly, and run it under the warm water. I find it helpful to run my fingers through the sheepskin to release the excess paint. This cleanup should take about three minutes to do. Never use soap on the woolly because it's made from natural sheepskin. Natural sheepskin has natural lanolin. Natural lanolin enables the woolly to be used again and again without becoming stiff or brittle. When you've sufficiently removed all of the paint from your painting project from the woolly, take your fingers and almost squeegee out the excess water. Take a cloth or a paper towel and remove all of the excess water. After this is done, you simply want to take your fingers and fluff up the woolly. It's okay to go ahead and use it on another painting project right away, or you can set it aside to air dry for future projects. The problem is, is that you may not be adding enough paint to the surface. 
watch this portion of the video that shows how the paints are applied in really heavy splotches so that actually drips occur, then blend out and blend with the woolly. Again, the biggest mistake that you're going to make is not applying enough paint to the surface where you actually see drips. It's kind of a strange concept at first if you've never done this technique before. Now watch closely. The paint actually begins to drip on the wall. So again, once my paint's on the surface, take the brush, spread the paint out. There's no magic or special talent required. If you find yourself along your edges or corners or ceiling lines, run your brush along there. Then you're going to take the woolly and stipple it down so that it makes a nice transition. Now if you'll notice the edge, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. The answer to this question is you really should never need to wash the woolly out while working on your walls. The problem that may be occurring is you may be adding too much paint to the surface with the brush. Watch this portion of the video in a situation where the woolly is actually oversaturated and how to solve the problem. One mistake that, that you can make is by adding too much paint to the surface. This is easy to tell because you'll, when you take the woolly and you begin tapping out, you'll actually see drip marks that will begin to form on the wall. Also, too, your woolly will become saturated with paint. If that's the situation, don't worry. Just take it over to a portion of the wall that you haven't painted yet. Download some of that paint on the wall and then come back in and tap out. Take a moment to watch this portion of the video on how to do the edges, corners, and ceiling line using the woolly to blend these areas. When done properly, you should get professional looking results. So I'm going to go ahead and continue painting the wall. So again, once my paint's on the surface, take the brush, spread the paint out. There's no magic or special talent required. If you find yourself along your edges or corners or ceiling lines, run your brush along there and spread it out. Then you're going to take the woolly and stipple it down so that it makes a nice transition. Now if you'll notice the edge, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. This way you get professional looking results. The little woolly is designed for areas that you find that the big woolly doesn't fit. Some areas like this, oftentimes you'll find these in kitchens and bathrooms or behind door frames. Just simply apply your paint colors. If you want to, you can even use a small brush. Take the little woolly, and I'm just going to begin tapping.
Hi, I'm Barbie, creator of the Wooly line of decorative paint tools. Thanks for watching our instructional video. Watching this will give you professional looking results and I hope you have as much fun watching it as we did making it.